Here I've got a nice functional equation question that showed up in a lot of different places. So it was shortlisted for the 2015 International Math Olympiad, and it was on the team selection test in 2016 for both Taiwan and Germany. So let's look at the problem. Our goal is to find all non-constant functions, f from integers to integers, satisfying the following functional equation. So we have for all integers x and y, f evaluated at x minus f of y equals f evaluated at f of x minus f of y minus 1. Okay, so I think maybe looking at this functional equation, there are two main hints of how to start. So let's maybe get those on the board. So the two things that jump out to me at least are we could start with a substitution that would cancel this x minus f of y. So notice we've got this x minus f of y inside of our function f. Maybe if we cancel that down to like the number zero, we would have some sort of nice simplification. So let's see how we could do that. Well, maybe the best way is to set x equal to f of y, and then let y be kind of free to be anything. So like I said, x equals f of y, and then y is free. And let's see if this helps us at all. So the left-hand side of our functional equation will now be f of f of y minus f of y. So that definitely simplifies. And then the right-hand side will be f of f of f of y minus f of y minus 1. Okay, well, notice that this left-hand side, like I said, simplifies to be f evaluated at 0. But then this right-hand side has a triple composition of f. You know, maybe that's the path to go, but I don't think that this path really jumps out to me immediately, given that a triple composition would probably be hard to work with. We've increased the difficulty over there on the right-hand side quite a bit. So, since we're going to put this on the back burner, maybe we should look at a substitution that will simplify the right-hand side. So let's look at the right-hand side. What simplification could we make? Well, what if these two terms could cancel? And we can do that by substituting y equals f of x and let x be free. So let's try that. So let's set x, just allow that to be freely anything, and then we'll let y equal f of x. So this is in some ways inspired by what we started here but didn't quite work. So let's see how this goes. So we'll have f evaluated at x minus f of f of x equals f of f of x minus f of f of x minus 1. But now let's notice that that right hand side cancels down just to the number 1. And then this left hand side is just f evaluated at something. It's quite complicated, but it's f evaluated at something. Now we should maybe take a step back and look at the two things that we have. Here we've got f of 0, which is just a number by the way, equals this triple composition minus this single composition minus 1. So we've got two instances of the function that are being summed together. One instance which is, like I said, a triple composition and one which is a single composition. So that's maybe a little bit tricky to work with. While this second substitution we made, we have a single instance of the function. Yes, it's being evaluated at something crazy, but we've got this single instance of the function equals negative one. Then maybe just taking as little as we can out of this equation, we see that negative one is an element of the image of f. But what that means is that there exists some integer, I'll call it t, such that f of t equals minus 1. And perhaps there are lots of integers. Maybe all integers that can be written of the form x minus f of f of x will definitely satisfy this equation. Maybe there are lots, maybe there's only one, but there is at least one. 
Okay, so I think maybe after looking at these two cases, we should maybe go down this rabbit hole and see if that gets us anywhere. So let's do that. So what have we done so far? We did a little bit of exploration and we got down to the point that negative one is an element of the image of f. That means we're able to find an integer, I'll call it t, such that f evaluated at t equals negative one. And now let's see what we can do with that. Looking back at our functional equation, we'd like to simplify this as much as possible using this fact right here. Well, maybe if we apply this functional equation where y is equal to t, we'll be left with only a single variable. Sure, we'll have a double composition here, but maybe that'll be all right. So let's set x equal to x. So in other words, x will remain like a free variable and we'll set y equal to t. And that is not free. That is the special value that has negative one when plugged into f. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So we'll have f of x minus f of t equals f of f of x minus f of t minus one. But now we'll use the fact that f of t is equal to negative one. And notice we've got minus signs attached to all of those. So those will turn into like plus one. So here, this is like one minus one. That means this cancels with this. And then here we are left with f of x plus one equals f evaluated at f of x. And in my mind, that's a much nicer functional equation than what we started with. Maybe it doesn't capture everything that we started with, but it will at least get us through the next couple of steps. Now, what can we do with this new functional equation? Well, we're gonna need to use it in concert with our old functional equation. And let's maybe look to simplify this object x minus f of y as much as possible. And how can we do that? Well, I think maybe the following substitution is the easiest way. Let's set x equal to f of x minus one, and then we'll set y equal to x. So really I'm replacing x with f of x minus one. So let's see what our functional equation looks like now. So we'll have f evaluated at f of x minus one minus f of x. So that's what we have on this left-hand side. And that will be equal to f evaluated at f of f of x minus one, and then minus f of x minus one. So there's kind of a lot going on there. Well, we can take this minus one and move it over and then recognize that this will cancel with this, leaving us with f of minus one plus one equals, well, maybe we can do a little bit of simplification here. So let's maybe think about this term as u, and that allows us to write this whole thing as f of f of u. And we can apply this maybe newly starred equation to that f of f of u, that will give us f of u plus one. But if u is f of x minus one, then that'll be just f of f of x. So let's write that down. We have this is f of f of x, minus f of x. So we've taken this weird like triple composition, but not quite a triple composition because we've got f of x minus one in there and reduced it to f of f of x. Now we can apply this yellow starred equation again and that'll leave us with f of x plus one minus f of x. Now, what do we have? We have f of x minus one minus f of x equals f of minus one minus or plus one. But let's notice that this is just a constant. I'll call this constant a. So this is nice. We've got something that looks like a difference equation, which you can kind of think of as a discrete differential equation for our function f. Namely, f of x plus one minus f of x equals this constant. Now we're gonna talk about solving this difference equation on the next board. So far we've done quite a bit, but we have a little bit left to do. So we've shown that f of x plus one minus f of x equals a, and that is true for all x in z. 
You can think about this f of x plus one minus f of x as being something as close to defining the derivative on integer valued functions as possible. So like I said, we wanna think that this is like the equation f prime of x equals a. But we definitely know how to solve that type of differential equation. And that gives us some sort of guess for our function f of x. And that would be f of x equals ax plus b for some constant integers a and b. So let's maybe prove that this guess is in fact correct. So how can we do that? Well, let's maybe set f of x equal to a times x plus g of x, where g of x is just another function. And we'll show that that function is indeed a constant function. So let's notice that on the one hand, we have a equals f of x plus one minus f of x. But on the other hand, that's the same thing as a times x plus one minus a times x plus g of x plus one minus g of x just performing this substitution into our form of f of x. Okay, but now notice that this a times x plus one minus a times x is exactly a, which will cancel on this left-hand side, leaving us with g of x plus one equals g of x, but that's true for all integers x. But what does that tell us? Well, we can start here at g of zero, which is equal to a constant. I'll call that constant b. And notice that g of zero is equal to g of zero plus one, which is g of one. But then in turn, g of one, applying this again, will be the same thing as g of one plus one, or g of two. And then g of two will be the same thing as g of two plus one, which is g of three. And then that's gonna be true for all values of g in the positive direction. And then furthermore, we can work backwards in the backwards direction and notice that g of zero is also the same thing as g of negative one. That's because g of negative one is the same thing as g of negative one plus one, which is g of zero. That's equal to b. And then again, working backwards, that's gonna be equal to g of negative two, g of negative three, and so on and so forth. So in the end, we have g of x equals b for all integers x. Now, if you really wanted to, you could prove that carefully with induction, but I think this argument is maybe good enough. Okay, but let's put this together. We set f of x equal to ax plus g of x, but we just showed that g of x was in fact just equal to a constant, meaning that we have the form that we want. So now we just have to take this form and apply it to our given, given functional equation and we'll be at the end. So we're almost there. So far we've shown that f of x equals ax plus b, so it's this linear function. Let's also notice that by the condition that f is a non-constant function, we know that a is not equal to zero. This non-constant condition was not part of the statement here, but in fact, if you allow constant functions, you just get one more kind of boring solution. So I think here we're tackling all of the interesting part of this problem. Okay, so now what we'll do is apply this function into this functional equation. So let's just do it from inside to out. So we'll start with f of x minus f of y, but f of y will be ay plus b. And that needs to be in parentheses like that. Then this is gonna be equal to f of f of x, but that's gonna be f of ax plus b, minus f of y, but that's gonna be minus ay minus b. I'll distribute the minus sign through there. And then we have a minus one. But now let's maybe simplify this a little bit. This is the same thing as x minus ay minus b. Now let's do these operations of f one more time. So here we'll have a times the argument, so that's x minus ay minus b plus b. And then over here we'll have a, ax plus b 
plus b minus a y minus b minus one, like that. Okay, so now let's expand everything and then move everything to one side of the equation. So here we'll have ax minus a squared y minus ab plus b. That's the left-hand side of our equation. Here we'll have a squared x plus ab plus b minus ay minus b minus 1. Now we get a tiny bit of simplification, not a ton, but a little bit. So let's take advantage of that little bit of simplification that we get. So here we'll have this b right here will cancel with this b right here. And now let's start moving some things around. So I'll move everything from the left-hand side to the right-hand side and then start collecting terms. So my x term will be a squared minus a times x, like I said. Then my y term will be actually the same. So we'll have plus a squared minus a times y. That comes from moving that over. Then let's see what my constant terms are. I have this minus AB, which will move over and combine with that one. So that'll be plus 2AB and then a minus B. And then we'll have all of this is equal to 1 just by moving the minus 1 to the other side of the equation. So just to reiterate, I moved all of this stuff over here and then I moved the 1 over to the other side. Then from here, we'll set x equal to y equal to zero and see if any simplification occurs. Maybe we'll have enough there to confirm what a and b are. Maybe we'll have to run through again one more time. Okay, so that's gonna give us two a b minus b equals one. But we can factor that a little bit. Notice that we can factor a b out. So that'll give us b times 2a minus 1 equals 1. But now since we're working over the integers, we know that each of these must be plus or minus 1. So that breaks into two cases. b is 1 and 2a minus 1 is 1, or b is negative 1 and 2a minus 1 is negative 1. Let's notice that 2a minus 1 cannot be negative 1 because that would imply that a equals 0, which is not allowed. That means both of these are equal to 1. So we get b equals 1 and we get 2a minus 1 equals 1, but that tells us that a equals 1. But now pitching those back up into our equation right here, we see that our function is in fact x plus 1. And then to finish all of this off, we actually have to check that this function indeed satisfies this functional equation. But that's not too hard to do. I'll let you guys do that on your own, and that's a good place to stop.